All right, so let's talk about building skirtings and cornices in uh, rooms because I see it often done wrong and it's very easy to do. Okay, I'm just going to put a box here just so I can get roughly the right size. I'm working. Um, here we go. All right. Oh, wow. This isn't even on. Okay, I'm going to set this to millimeters. And this is set to millimeters. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I always run it in millimeters. So let's just say this is a room, and let's say one wall of it is six meters, and the width is five meters. Okay. And the height doesn't matter for this. I can just put it down to zero. All right. So I don't like the grid. I'm going to press Alt W just to go full screen here. So if I just build, a room quickly. Um, normally I'll do this by just drawing around a... Normally I'll do this through CAD and just drawing on top of CAD. A CAD that I've imported. Control I. Uh, I don't need that box. So all I've got now is the spline. And I'm going to come in here. Select it. Uh, go into vertex mode. And add to the vertex. And we're just going to Make it a little bit. Let's take all these, make sure they're all corners. They are it's just, you know, so it's not completely straight because normally rooms aren't completely straight. Let's make sure on top. I did turn on snaps, but somehow it doesn't seem to be snapping. What's it doing? Vertex is on. Okay. That's strange. Okay, maybe if I go in orthographic mode, that will snap. No. Love it when you have things that don't make any sense. Okay, I'm just going to take this. Uh, on the Y axis, it's there. So we're going to just copy and paste that. And on the X axis, it's just Max being weird, so. Okay, and now we want, so this is going to be a wall, so we're just going to outline this. Um, let's do minus 200. All right. And so let's say this is our walls, and we're just going to extrude it. And let's go up 2,400. Okay, and press F3. So this is normally walls, and then we're going to cut in windows and doors and stuff, but, you know, for the purpose of this, we don't need that. Now, often this is an edit poly, so I'm just going to do that. And now I need the line to put the cornice around here. So what I'll often do is just go into uh, polygon mode, select like the top polygon, for instance, Actually, I won't do that. What I'll do is undo that. I'll put another edit poly on, select the polygon and delete it, and then go into border mode. So I'll click on here. So I've got the inside border selected, create shape. Make sure it's on linear and not smooth, because if it's on smooth, you end up with this weird shape, and we don't want that. If you do get this, you can just go into vertex mode, control A, and make them all corners. Yeah. All right. So now I've got this uh, spline here. I can delete that edit poly and it puts, you know, the walls back to how they were. All right. Let's unselect the walls. So I was just holding Alt and clicked. And I've got this spline. Now, I'm going to show you why this is interesting because this is, you know, not centered. So it's going to cause problems. If you're in top view, you don't realize that. So I'm going to put a rectangle and I'm just going to make it 200 by 200. And I'm just making a cornice here quickly. And for the cornice, um, we're going to just go, uh, snap's working now, okay. So we're going to go like that. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to go up. And we're going to go across and up and up and across. And close it. Go into sub-object mode, verts, just line this up. And take these ones and these, and we're going to make these Bezier corners. And just make sure you've selected the middle, 
So you can turn off snaps, but sort of trying to snap there. So we can just sort of put this like this. And we can do the same with this. I mean, there's lots of things we can do here. That's just a basic, basic kind of cornice. All right, let's delete this. I just wanted that so I knew it's 200. All right, now, here's what I mean by a problem. So we select this, and what you're going to do is you're going to use sweep. So I've got sweep here, but you might want your modifier list and just type in SW. It'll bring up sweep, press enter. And you don't realize there's anything wrong. Use custom shape pick, and we're going to choose this guy. Wow, is it really not a problem? Okay, wow. Okay, I've never seen it not be a problem. If it is a problem, all sorts of things can go wrong. What you need to do, I'm just going to cut this guy off, is come over here, go effect pivot, center to object, come in here, reset X form, reset selected, convert to edit spline. And those problems of it being all over the place and weird are going to go away. So we're going to put sweep and use custom to pick, to pick it. And let's just make sure that's this is in the top corner because, like, you know, if you have it here, it's going to be in a different place in relation to the, the spline here. And if you unhide all, you know, here it's on, but it's inside the wall, so just make sure you have it selected in the right place. This will put it above, this will put it in the middle. So, you know, this, this pivot is pretty good. So now we have a cornice. Um, I'm going to press Alt-Q to isolate it. You see you've got this weird shading, and this is a problem. And I've seen even experienced visualizers do this. So in order to handle it, what we want to do is uh, just take here and turn off smooth path. And normally that should handle it. It doesn't always though. In some cases, this will become jagged. So if this becomes jagged, you can just put like put an edit poly on top, select all of them, um, just control A, select all the polys. And then what you're going to want to do is just go to your smoothing groups and click auto smooth. All right, and it's going to have to be back where we were before because that's what it was doing. Yeah? But again, this is just to handle. Sometimes you get these facets when you turn it off. So now what you can do is you can go polygon mode. And instead of selecting all, you just select. It doesn't matter if it's these ones or if it's these ones. It really doesn't matter. So you have it like that, oops, and again, you're going to want to smooth this. So see here, it's all weird, and as soon as I auto smooth this, that'll disappear. And what it's doing is it's only smoothing the selection. So I'm going to get these edges, which are nice and quite sharp. So that's sort of how you do it. That's how you do uh, a cornice. And if you want to do the skirting, it's exactly the same. I would just clone this, copy, uh, take this down to zero, isolate it, turn off that, delete that edit poly, uh, delete the sweep really. I need a skirting board shape, so I'm going to just again do a rectangle. I want it to be about 150 high and maybe 30 wide. And we're going to do something easy. Um, we're going to just refine this again. Go to solve mode, uh, vertex, go refine, put it like this, like that, delete those. Uh, okay. You know what, we're just gonna use this because why make it more complicated? So to click on sweep, use custom pick, and we pick this. 
And this is a good example because it's on the outside. So, you know, the sweep parameters are going to be more like in the bottom. And now we've got it going the right way, but this is backwards. So here it's got mirror. So we can just, we're in a fortunate position of just having to mirror it. And then it works. Now, sometimes you can't do this or this won't work. And in that case, you know, it's going backwards. There's nothing you can do. So in that case, what you can do is, again, go sub-object mode. Here, just click on segment and delete one. It doesn't really matter which. And then if you go into vertex, you'll see one of them is yellow. And that's your first vert. So that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six. And because it's a closed, it was closed, you couldn't have it going the other way. Like it would always go this way around. You can't have it go the other way around. So what you want to do here is now you've deleted that, you can, it can, you can flip it and make it go the other way around. And you just come here and click on make first. There you go. And now this one's the other one. And so now again, I can just connect these two. So what it looks like I did is it was connected. I deleted it and I reconnected it. But what I actually did is made it so instead of going one, two, three, four, five, six, it goes the opposite way. It starts here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you do that, when you put on the sweep, you'll see now it's in the right place. Now there's an easier way, like I did say, yeah, the, the easier way is um, just click up here on mirror on XY, you know, mirror on this one or mirror on that one. Um, but the thing is, is even though that is easier, uh, it's not always workable. Uh, the other thing to watch is this banking. Sometimes you're going to want to turn this off. So if something weird is going on, try turning it off, see if it fixes it. And then also you might want to click generate mapping coordinates and maybe turn on real world map scan. All right, so there we have it. We've got the skirting and we've got the cornice. And that's really all you have to do. You have to remember though, even here, see here it's fine. You don't get any of that weird banding in the corners. So just pay attention and see if it is banding, you know. You know what I mean? So that's it, that's skirting. And that is uh, cornice. And that's a simple way of doing it. You're going to need to cut out spaces for, for doors. And so cut that off. But uh, yeah, this is the simplicity of how you do it. All right, thanks a lot, guys. So yeah, this is just something simple. But it's something that I often see done wrong. So I just thought I would you know, help you out and give you some pointers to get it done right.